Christmas came early this year and Apple just dropped a bag full of goodies with the new iOS 18 update. So what's good, what's bad, and what's downright surprising? Let's unpack this together and see how it might change the way you use your iPhone. Here's a breakdown of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Starting with the visual layout. Okay, so let's start with the home screen. And mainly the one thing that I think irritated me the most when I switched from Android to the iOS. You couldn't just place an icon anywhere on the screen, preferably on the bottom of it so it's easier to reach. I was used to having this layout with the top of my screen reserved for the widgets that aren't meant to be touched, and on the bottom of each screen there were two rows of my most used apps. It made sense, and then I switched to iPhone and I was like, you guys live like that? Eventually I gave up. I cleared all the apps and started using the app library instead. But now iPhone users can finally feel the power of Android and place items wherever they want without some third-party solutions. Welcome to the 21st century. But that's not all. You can now also play a little with colors. You can adjust the brightness of the background so it contrasts better with the icons, decide if you prefer smaller icons with names or just bigger tiles, and those are good changes. They actually make it easier to use the home screen, you know, something you look at probably like 200 times a day. But then Apple tried to go even further, and this is where it gets controversial. You can turn on the dark mode, which sounds great, and some apps adjust to it really nice, but as you can see, some don't at all. But you can force them to by turning on the tinted mode. And all I have to say is that you can make it work. I really admire what Apple did here with letting the software decide which colors should be dark and which should be colored and by how much. It looks much better now than in the first beta they released. And I guess it's just a matter of deciding whether you prefer efficiency in finding the app you're looking for as fast as possible or whether you prefer the minimalist monotone look that matches well with your wallpaper. And finally, we can change those lock screen buttons. You know, the flashlight and camera button that have been sitting here for ages. And while I think the flashlight over there is really useful, by the way, you can now change not only the intensity but also the beam angle, which is pretty cool, but the camera icon on the right is not really necessary as you can simply swipe right to open the camera app. So it makes perfect sense to change the icon to a remote, for example, if you often use your smartphone to control your Apple TV. Or you can program really anything you can imagine with a proper shortcut setting. Now, one of the most noticeable changes is the new control center. Everything's more colorful, customizable and round. Just like the Xiaomi Hyper OS, hence the thumbnail. Xiaomi always used to copy Apple's homework, so the Americans were like, how would you like that if we copied your system this time, huh? I'd actually prefer it if Apple let us choose if we want the icons to be round or squared like they used to be, but that's the one thing that they forgot to include. Shame. But on the plus side, there are no multiple control center screens. You can have your main one, one for controlling music, and another one for smart home accessories. Seriously, using an iPhone now feels like using an Android. I feel like Steve Jobs wouldn't like that idea. Ok, let's talk about something different, and this one's one of my favorites. Say goodbye to scrolling through settings to find your saved passwords. iOS 18 introduces a new dedicated passwords app. It's perfect if you're deep in the Apple ecosystem as the layout will feel familiar, looking much like the Reminders or Shortcuts app. It makes it really easy to see which passwords might have been compromised, which have been reused by you in different platforms, and it encourages you to change some of them from time to time because now it's really easy to store your passwords securely and access them quickly. Now, speaking of security, are you cheating on someone? Well, I hope not, but if you were, you would love this feature. Let's say I have this app for corn in my library and I don't want anybody to know. I can just press it longer and click Require Face ID. Now my iPhone asks if I want to just lock it or hide it in a hidden folder. Now I cannot even search for it. I have to go to my library, scroll down and there are all my hidden apps. And I can only access them via Face ID. But let's get serious for a moment. I think it can be useful if you want to hide distractions like TikTok or Instagram, but you still need those apps for publishing content. 
Or if you manage a professional account for some business, you can lock the access to it so your kid, for example, doesn't post something embarrassing on an official profile. Another good update comes to the Messages app. Not only do we get more reaction options to the messages, you can now format and animate each individual character. Cringe? Yeah, but this one is cool. You can now plan your message to be sent later. This can be useful if you know it's not the right time to disturb someone. Or if maybe you don't want to forget to wish someone happy birthday and you know you're gonna be busy later. And yes, it works even if your iPhone is turned off. Also, you can move these options up and down or hide them in the bottom section to only see those you'll actually use. Now after years of waiting, we finally have T9 calling. Type the letters of the person you want to call and iOS will take care of the rest. Now, the Photos app. Just for the Halloween season, Apple decided to do this. Yeah, there's so much going on. Some people prefer it over tabs we had earlier, but I'm not feeling it for now. It's just too much info at once. Thankfully, you can customize it, but I've been using this update for a few weeks now, and I'm still not used to this new layout. Also, there is now improved search, which is great, but when I typed in winter, it literally showed me all the pictures that I've taken during the time between December and February. And I mean, technically it's not wrong, it's just not really what I meant, so I don't know, maybe it's a me problem. The calendar app also got an update, which makes it a little bit more usable with new layouts like compact, stacked, and details. Also, the calendar and the reminders app communicate with each other, so we can see both in your calendar and add both events and reminders by clicking the plus icon. Now, if you're using Safari as your main browser, there's a new feature that lets you Thanos snap distracting items. What did you do? What did you do? And while I like the idea and the animation a lot, it would be more convenient if you could just press on the item and then you would see the option to hide it. Instead, you have to open this window, click hide distracting items, and then you can terminate it. But you cannot swipe in this window. So if it's not a tool to quickly close all ads, I'm not really sure what it is for, to be honest. Thankfully, the reader mode is still there and does a much better job at hiding distractions and now you have more options to customize it to your liking with colors and fonts. Now because I value your time, I will quickly go over a few other changes that are worth mentioning. For example, in the Notes app, formulas and equations entered while typing are solved instantly with math notes. You can also add graphs. Now, if you suffer from motion sickness, you can turn on vehicle motion cues. It will display little animated dots on the screen that match your vehicle's movement. Create custom voice commands for actions you frequently use, like triggering a shortcut or performing a system action. For example, you can say Pomodoro and your iPhone will automatically start counting time. Did you know your iPhone can play ambient noise? The new sounds, Night and Fire, have been added to help you relax and sleep better. And last but not least, Apple introduced dynamic wallpapers to your iPhone. For now, there's only one that changes the tone depending on the time of the day, but I'm assuming soon we'll get some more exciting wallpapers like we have on macOS. And that's just scratching the surface, with tons of other updates like being able to format external drives with your iPhone or the ability to mirror your iPhone's screen on a Mac. The iOS 18 is packed with exciting changes and you don't even have to buy a new phone. So if you have any of these devices listed on the screen, check your software update settings and try out the new features today. And let me know which ones were the most overdue. I am Miles, you're now miles ahead. And if you liked this video, maybe you'll enjoy this one as well. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.